Hi, Eric Lenask here, coming to you from Comtel in Las Vegas. And uh, this morning, I'm happy to talk to the CEO of Allied Fiber, Hunter Newby. Morning, Hunter. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Eric. Pleasure to be here. So uh, certainly an exciting couple of days. Um, what are some of the things that you've seen here at the show? Well, there's a, obviously a lot of activity. Um, there's development, particularly in the infrastructure side, which you know we're seeing across the board. Uh, the presence of more optical equipment vendors, the understanding and acceptance of the physical fiber asset to build on pond for transport. Um, but really, I think the thing that, that kind of stole the show in terms of the news was the AT&T T-Mobile announcement um, you know, of the acquisition. And uh, you know, overall, there's a lot of people that are taking positions on it. I, I wouldn't necessarily call them skeptics, but people that aren't necessarily sure that it's going to work out uh, best for the American people. And I think there's something that needs to be understood about that. The combination of AT&T and T-Mobile for wireless doesn't necessarily uh, weaken the country by eliminating a mobile operator. It actually builds a stronger position for the surviving entity, AT&T, uh, to have a more meaningful plan to deploy the capital to build the backhaul infrastructure necessary to deploy LTE. And if you think about the two organizations, um, and, and you look at T-Mobile and Deutsche Telekom, and you look at what they would have had to have done to deploy capital to support the backhaul infrastructure on their own for LTE, where they don't really have any other business units to you know, leverage the use of that same infrastructure, whereas AT&T does, has several, you know, fiber to home, and they've got cloud, and they've got a wireline business, and a long haul business, and everything else. Um, it just, the combination makes more sense, so that they're gonna be able to deploy the capital, and they're gonna be able to build the infrastructure in a time frame that meets the needs of the people for the country, which is, again, large country. We're dealing with some geography problems, and the time and distance is money. A lot of other countries, a lot smaller, so they can deploy capital and reach their goal in, in less capital in a much shorter time frame. We don't have the luxury of that, so I think it's overall a, a good thing. And a lot of people here at the conference, some people aren't so happy about it because they were a vendor to T-Mobile, and that's probably not going to continue. But others now that were, were or are vendors to AT&T are going to see an increase in spending and an increase in growth, and I believe a very methodical plan to uh, the deployment of infrastructure to support LTE. What does it mean for the, uh, the competitive landscape with the now three remaining players? Well, that's a really great question. It's, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't want to be disparaging or anything towards uh, Sprint. It doesn't look good for Sprint that they didn't get a deal done with T-Mobile, number one. Uh, you know, there's issues with Clear. Um, we're not sure how that's all going to work out yet. And Sprint really needs that to work out in order to have their backhaul strategy in place, which at the moment looks like a separate company. That, you know, is there a combination there? Or are they going to have to restructure before there's a combination? So time is being lost. Whereas the AT&T T-Mobile um, deal sets them on a course for... Um, you know, again, a, a structured way to deploy capital, something that makes sense, something that says, look, we've got 40% of the mobile market now, and we need to maintain that, and we need to, to spend. And Verizon, obviously, I think they're in really good shape. I think that they're, you know, their guys have been doing a great job building a network and delivering. Um, hopefully, the next iPhone is on the 4G network instead of the 3G <laughs> network, which I know that some people will complain about that a bit. Um, but when we talk about geography, and people want, you know, that high speed wireless coverage, it costs real money. And the only way to, to you know, make the investments to get a return on it. And if there's a lot of competitors, and there's a lot of churn, it's going to be difficult for anybody to justify that in terms of the entity spending the money. So uh, in a sense, less is more at this stage because of that. Now think about this for one second. If the combined entity of AT&T and T-Mobile and what Verizon continues to do, and if Clear and Sprint can get their stuff worked out, gets fiber built to the towers, once it's there and the provider of that selling transport to whoever the tenant is, the fiber's there. So laying the groundwork today for that infrastructure prepares the platform for a future entrant to come in, deploy antennas, and have access to that infrastructure immediately. So again, less is more today in terms of the capital and the time required to build the base level fiber infrastructure to get well beyond where we are today in terms of fiber to towers and tower sites, which is probably 20 to 25% if I'm being really generous. How do we get to 85, 90% in what time frame? Can you do it if there's 15 competitors? No, it's too fragmented, it's too scattered. It needs to get consolidated 
then you have a plan to build the infrastructure. And once the infrastructure for transport is in place, then you can have mobile operators coming in, taking advantage of the spectrum, buying equipment, deploying, and having a turnkey operation, or as turnkey as you can get, because the connectivity is there. When is that? Well, it's whenever it is. And I think that you know, through some of the things that are happening now, that time frame becomes shorter because as less players are in the market today, it looks like less choice because there's less competition, but that actually creates focus in the model for you know, spending the money. There, what impact is there on the smaller uh, local and regional wireless carriers, if any? Um, well, they're unto themselves, uh, have been, will be. I think they'll get stronger if they're building fiber out and if they're moving to an, an LTE 4G platform in and of themselves. And, you know, they'll be strong players there. Obviously, roaming agreements will be easier now that there's less operators to have to go negotiate with. Probably won't get as good a terms because there's less, so they know that, you know, you can't really go to a lot of other places. Um, and I think AT&T and Verizon will walk in lockstep in a lot of that stuff because I know that they use each other in certain markets where one has the wireless and one has the backhaul and the flip-flop, um, you know. But those regional and rural wireless operators, if they continue to invest in their infrastructure and they have a decent base, uh, at some point, you know, they could be acquired or they could combine with others. Um, you know, maybe the cable industry. There's been some talk about Comcast doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listen, if all the cable companies combine their fiber to tower assets in, you know, a footprint, and then they sort of rationalize across that footprint, uh, you know, a, a mobile network scheme. And they created an entity that was all jointly owned by the cable companies on a pro rata basis based on their footprint. They could have, you know, a very strong play, I think. Um, and then, of course, they would have roaming agreements back and forth with the other major wireless carriers, which would make a lot of sense because obviously they're, you know, on that type one where they are and when they're not, the other mobile guys would want to do that. And I think actually with T-Mobile being assumed by AT&T, there's a void for that fourth, which could in fact be filled by the cable companies if they came together as one to create one, one brand. Uh, again, I don't know the mechanics of how that would work out in terms of the JV and the business model, but they have the physical assets to support the backhaul, and that's the key to success in mobile today. I agree, though, the challenge is going to be getting them to the table and uh, you know, collectively talking about it. Uh, what does it all mean for uh, your average Joe consumer? Again, like I said, in, in the near term, it looks like less choice. So um, you don't have a lot of places to go, and there's going to be more control. Um, but it, if you go back to Triennial Review in 03 and broadband relief, and you know when the box got protection with fiber, that's what spurred Fios and you know Uverse and, and the fiber buildouts. If they didn't get that, they wouldn't have done it, and we wouldn't have had that. We're sort of in the midpoint of that now where that's actually competition to the cable companies. So if that didn't occur, would there be any competition to the cable companies you know, at that speed? No. So there's, you know, there's these sort of leapfrog moments. So we're having a contraction. But we're having a contraction because it needs to occur, I believe, in order to justify the capital deployment. So as the cycle goes, as long as this one lasts, maybe it's three, four, five years, absent any other new player coming in, then they'll, that fiber-based infrastructure will be there, which is the platform to support a new you know, party coming in. And then maybe new services, better pricing, better products, something not better, but different, more choice, so competition. Um, and then it all comes back later. We're just we're really dealing with an infrastructure problem that's going to cost billions of dollars to solve. And you can't expect um, you know, a, a fragmented industry to solve for that. They need to work together. And I think that the consumers will benefit in the long run um, as a result. Well, no, no question. Anybody who's uh, had the benefit of uh, using a 4G service knows the difference that uh, that already makes. Clearly. Uh, There's so demand. No question about <laughs> it. Uh, certainly going to be a, a very interesting space to follow. And I look forward to chatting uh, again about yep. uh, as, as we see how these things unfold. Excellent. Thank I've been you. talking here uh, at Comtel in Las Vegas with Allied Fibers, Hunter Newby. Hunter, it's been a pleasure as always. Thanks a lot. Yeah, great to see you.